It's near midnight as the cream of America's fighting machine move out in the next phase of their war on terror. Hi. We did hard, eh? We did. Lugging the latest in night fighting gear and human sensors, the elite US Special Forces prefer to deploy and hunt their enemy in darkness. Well, we always like to work at night if we can. I mean, there's just a lot less observation. We don't try to advertise everything that we do. As in all warfare, though, the best laid plans can go horribly wrong. Just a few hours after these pictures were taken, this Chinook helicopter was returning to base when it plunged into the sea, killing the entire crew of 10. It was a tragic start to America's latest intervention in Asia, but the campaign goes on. The mission really is to advise, train and assist the Philippines and not and in doing that, we hope to increase their capabilities in the war against terror. In their jungle camps, the target of the American deployment are these men, the hundred or so gunmen of the Abu Sayyaf. Muslim militants who have turned to kidnapping to fund the fight for an Islamic State and some say just to fill their pockets. At night, as soon as it gets dark, I'm chained and I keep chained until the daylight hours, till the sun comes up. Um, for 10 months, the group has no been holding American missionaries Burke, Martin and Gracia Burnham along with a Filipino somebody. nurse. I wish I had treats. To give them. I wish I had things to give them, because this is no life for them either. The gunmen want two million US dollars for their release, but talks have stalled and time is running out. Martin is now gravely ill and has to be carried as the group flees the army's advance. I think the boys were able to get some rice, but there was none left for us this morning, so that was what we had. Speaking exclusively to us, this Abu Sayyaf member, using the alias Abu Nidal, delivered this warning if the money's not paid. There's now a sense of urgency for these Green Berets, who will next week join their Filipino counterparts on combat patrols targeting the Abu Sayyaf. Their real aim is to deliver George Bush a double victory, the rescue of two Americans and a decisive blow against Muslim militants. If there's any message, it's a, it's a message that the United States is determined to assist our friends and to defeat uh, terrorism throughout the world, wherever it may be. Yet unlike Afghanistan, this protracted guerrilla war has no battle lines. We are operating in an area with thousands of civilians, innocent as well as supporters of the terrorists, living together in a community. That's not Afghanistan. And finding the enemy isn't the only problem. Tonight, Foreign Correspondent presents startling claims of collusion between the Philippines Army and the rebels and evidence of systematic human rights abuses that could deal the Americans not a battlefield defeat but a public relations disaster. I'm doing this for the truth because I can no longer swallow what is happening in Basilan. The island of Basilan is beautiful but highly dangerous, especially for visiting outsiders. Muslim militancy here is nothing new. It's been around in one form or another for the past 400 years. Muslims blame the country's Christian elite for the poverty and want their own Muslim state. And for their part, the Abu Sayyaf is funding much of their insurgency through kidnapping. There's a price on the head of any outsider, but in the past year, a hundred locals have also been seized, and without payment, many have been killed. 
Basiland's governor, Wahab Akbar, has the job of trying to enforce order in this lawless place. We, we appreciate the uh, no, American coming is somewhat like a blessing, a blessing. You know. But Governor Akbar is living proof of the conflicting loyalties here, of the problem the Americans will have in deciding who is friend or foe. While he's the chief local representative of the Philippines government, he's also been a Muslim guerrilla who many say helped create the Abu Sayyaf. It's a charge he denies. No, not at all. In fact, I'm, I'm, since the very beginning they found it, I'm always opposing their ideas. And to prove his bona fides, points to his own campaign against the Abu Sayyaf, what he calls the balance of terror, killing them if he finds them and kidnapping their families. Mm -hmm. I said, do not be afraid, because these people are looking for money. If they behead one, we behead one. Hey, he's now. The governor's rough justice is also rapidly filling Basilan City Jail. Can I ask you why they, 60 why they alleged jail? Abu Sayyaf sympathisers are held here with no access to lawyers, no trial date and no apparent evidence. Those in jail are the lucky ones. The unlucky are dead. Four cases a month. Four a month? Oh, yeah, of, four cases. Of what? Of uh, alleged violations, complaints. Of what sort of violations? Uh, from, from killing down to uh, legal arrest, disappearances. And it's America's new ally in the campaign against terrorism, the Philippines Army, that stands accused of the most disturbing violations. When these troops patrol, as on this exercise, they're in enemy territory. They don't know the terrain, they can't match the on-foot speed of the guerrillas and are often outfoxed even by local farmers who are said to send messages telling the Abu Sayyaf of the army's movements. They move from place to place, they're highly mobile, so it's really hard for us to strike on them. Garrisoned for their two-year tours, they never leave base except like this, in number and heavily armed, potential targets from the community they're meant to be protecting. OK, this is Basilan, about 60 kilometres long, 40 kilometres wide. The Philippine Army's chief spokesman, General Edelberto Aden, spent 12 years fighting Muslim insurgents in Mindanao. It's not enough that you only capture the, the armed guerrilla. You must uh, nip, you must cut his lifeline, which includes, which is the 80% of the movement. And who are these? These are the relatives who are, who are keeping the ransom money, who have bought apartments, transportation businesses, tricycle, jeepney companies in Mindanao, rice mills. They are the relatives of the Abu Sayyaf. <laughs> Last year, the army got what it had long wanted. Presidenta Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Presidential approval to arrest suspected Abu Sayyaf supporters without warrant. I saw already several men that inside my premises, then tied the hands of my husband both at the back, then brought him out. 62-year-old Osin Abdukaram and scores of other Muslims were dragged from their homes by masked troops. They were brought here to Basiland's military base at Tabiyawang, the same camp now used by the Americans as their forward base on Basiland. It took Abdukaram's wife three days to see him, and when she did, she was shocked by what had happened. There was paper put inside a certain coconut shell smashed with uh, pepper, with salt, and it was placed on his body. How bitter it was. So uh, yeah, on. Yes, rub on his body, his head, because they want to let, the, let them accept, admit that they are terrorist people, but he didn't admit, because he is not. He is a civilian. He is a law-abiding citizen, not a terrorist. This was the boy who was shot 
shot at no, by the Marines, two high school boys who were shot In at, scores uh, of testimonies by gathered by human rights worker Maria Enriquez, then, uh, most say their confessions were extracted here. under Another torture by the army. And this one is a widow. We were able to document, uh, I think, seven incidents of killings, summary execution. By who? By the military. What kind of government do we have? 73 people, including Mrs. Abdul Karam's husband, now face death by lethal injection for crimes most say they did not commit, kidnapping and membership of the Abu Sayyaf. Even Basilean's version of Dirty Harry, Governor Wahab Akbar, admits the campaign went too far. We are sorry that the implementers were not very... Uh, uh, kind in implementing the, the instruction of the president. They, what, what do you mean? Uh, well, some, some people were arrested when the wrong, wrong ones. Penis, scrotum and testicles were cut off. A gruesome chronicle of abuses detailed by the government's own human rights commissioner in the area, attorney Jose Mamuang. Summary executions are being done by uh, some of the legitimate forces. The military? Uh, uh, some evidence that like we have affidavits of the relatives and some witnesses that it was committed by government troops. The army crackdown is in fact backfiring. It's creating more guerrillas. Said Ali and Ismail Kawa have just spent six months fighting with the Abu Sayyaf. They say they only joined to escape the army's indiscriminate arrests. And it's not as if the Americans don't know what's happening. The latest human rights report from the US State Department clearly states members of the security services were responsible for extrajudicial killings, disappearances, torture and arbitrary arrest and detention. But it seems nobody's told the US Special Forces, now working with the same Filipino troops accused of the crimes. If there's any truth to it, it would be a concern to us. But uh, I can only report at this time, we, don't, we have not heard of any allegations and we have no reports from our, our uh, troops on the ground of human rights abuses. If it's really ignorance or merely turning a blind eye, the Americans seem destined for more nasty surprises, like the answer to the biggest question of all, why 6,000 Filipino troops have not been able to kill off 80 or so Abu Sayyaf gunmen. All the evidence is that they work together and have a vested interest in keeping this conflict going. It all came out into the open last year during the bizarre end to this siege in the town of Lamitan. On June 1st, as the Abu Sayyaf gunmen and their leaders were holed up in this hospital with about 20 hostages, including the Americans, they were surrounded and it looked like the end. Then they just walked out this door. To some, it was just a military mistake. To others, evidence of army collusion with the Abu Sayyaf. The army's most vocal critic is this man, Catholic priest Father Cirillo Nakorda. When Father Nakorda was kidnapped by the Abu Sayyaf six years ago, he saw firsthand how Filipino Marines sold guns and bullets to the Abu Sayyaf. But he only went public after witnesses said they saw the army sharing ransom money with senior army officers so they could walk away from the Lamatan siege. The amounts he details are in pesos. 10 million for, for the military, 10 million for the governor, and 5 million goes to the Busayab. So the Busayab was, was really uh, complaining after that because they were doing the dirty things, but they just received uh, the small share of the ransom. You're saying basically that, it, that everybody from the governor down is making money out of this hostage taking? Yes, yes. Yes, this is, this is the serious problem. So what's your warning to the American forces who are here well, thinking would, they're going after Islamic terrorists? Well, I would like to advise the American soldiers to, to be extra careful and they have to study the situation first 
because uh, they, yeah they have a good intention training our soldiers running after the Abu Sahib. but they are they are just running after this ordinary Abu Sahib. they should know who are these people behind the Abu Sahib. these people are responsible for this group these are the very people that they should uh, focus the governor. the governor and some military officials who are in cahoots with the governor in the Abu Sayyaf. Oh, that's very false. You know. When people get frustrated, that's always the case of the people. When they are frustrated, they, they are accepting rumors, which is not true. Are the army given money from kidnapping by the Abu Sayyaf? Do they share the money? Oh, no, they don't have money from the Abu Sayyaf. They have military. Yes, they have military. They have money. They have money. They have money. It's in this murky, dangerous world of dirty dealing and big bucks that the American missionaries, Martin and Gracia Burnham, have now been held for the past 10 months. We have uh, our faith in God. The Lord's been good to us. The Philippines military says rescue is being delayed because they're under orders to retrieve the Americans alive. But it seems there's a much bigger problem. Again, the governor strongly denies this claim. So for now, the main hope for the Burnhams and Filipino nurse Deborah Yap rests with the high-tech search and destroy equipment these US Special Forces have brought with them to root out the Abu Sayyaf. Nobody would be happier, I think, if, if, if the Burnhams and Deborah Yap were released today than I would and most of the men in the, in the task force. Uh, but again, that is the mission of the Philippine uh, government. Uh, so we, we are here to assist them in any way we can with that. <laughs> It's tempting to see this whole struggle now as relatively straightforward. The might of the US military bearing down on 100 militants of the Abu Sayyaf. Okay, stand up! Stand up! Stand up! In fact, the potential for conflict is much bigger. The prospect of being dragged into a much bigger war with a much bigger force. The 12,000 strong Moro Islamic Liberation Front, the MILF. Unlike the Abu Sayyaf, their fight for Muslim rights is widely respected and has a great deal of support. But they too have links with Al-Qaeda and on Basilan, they're accused of harbouring the Abu Sayyaf. There are links between the MILF and some foreign terrorist groups from the Middle East. We know also that in uh, Basilan, the MILF and the Abu Sayyaf coexist. In fact, uh, this is one of the tactical uh, challenges that when we pursue the Abu Sayyaf in Basilan, they cross over to the MILF areas. That means the threat of escalation, what the Americans call mission creep of ending up in firefights not just with the Abu Sayyaf, but also with the Moro Front. Given their links with the Al-Qaeda, some say why not, but this will be a much bigger fight. Are you Professor, Professor Yeah. This man may not look so impressive at first glance, 
But he's the Moro Front's southern commander, Sharif Jalabi, and his men are waiting for the Americans. If no choice, no alternative, they have to retaliate. In other words, they have to protect themselves by not uh, you know, being harmed by, uh, by the aggressors and preparing to uh, maybe arm force of the Philippines or the U.S. troops. That would mean the Americans confronting not just the Yabu Sayyaf, but the thousands of highly skilled and motivated Muslim guerrillas of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Flying over this jungled landscape, it's hard not to reflect on what happened the last time the Americans were dragged into a guerrilla war here in Southeast Asia. Philip the Philippines, Chinese beef, Saddam, General, P. 